I'm going to say morning because it is morning for me, but it might be any time for you guys. Uh, I haven't even had my first cup of tea yet, but I've been kind of thinking about this and I thought I want to shoot a video before I put the kettle on. Uh, then I'm off to site to meet up with Ash. Uh, we're working on another buy to sell project that we're just about to finish. So we're snagging it off and making sure it's finished. Right. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you know, but I have an MBA and I really enjoyed doing the MBA. I really enjoyed learning about business and I enjoyed learning about tools. And I've got quite a, I, I like it when you're able to quantify and structure things because then you can use tools and systems to, to process your thinking. And also I think, you know, I can't invent it. If somebody else has learned this stuff before and they've academically proved that it's quantifiable, particularly in business, which is such an exciting and such a fast-moving um, pace of a, of a thing, uh, being an entrepreneur, why don't we use really uh, sensible tools in order to uh, grow our businesses, understand our businesses, set strategy and make decisions. So here we are from Susie Cole, MBA. Um, <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> what this is, it, it's the Boston Consulting Group Matrix. So if I can show you from... Here, you've got low market growth through to high market growth. So here you've got cows, <laughs> and here you've got stars. And here you've got cash generation, low cash generation to high cash generation. So high market growth and high cash, cash generation are your stars. Um, here are your problem shells, low cash generation, but high market growth. So they're your question marks or your problem shells. Um, at the moment, they're not making much money, but they're in a market that actually is growing quite well. So you've kind of got two choices. You either eliminate them or you try and move them over to making quite significant money. So, for example, more and more people are renting. You may have properties that are not generating a lot of cash, um, but actually are in a marketplace where uh, there's a lot greater demand. And so either you can move segment uh, to improve that cash growth. So for example, if you kind of, to be honest, if your property is a little bit tatty, um, you are not going to outperform uh, the rental values. Whereas if your property is very good, because there's a lot of demand, particularly if you know an urban area um, where there's strong demand and you've got amazing photographs, you may well be able to, and, and you do a, a refurb, you may well be able to move that problem child, which is in a high growth area, but low cash generating into your star. Your dogs, woof, <laughs> here's my dog. <laughs> so this is low market growth rate and low cash generation. So generally, the, the perception there is eliminate them. If you've got a couple of dogs in your portfolio, so it's in an area where there just really isn't much growth, there isn't much demand, and you're not getting much money, and potentially you've got money left in these properties, do you know what? Sell them sell them, look at your return on capital employed, look at your yield, and then if, you, if you're still struggling to sell them because mentally you just want to hold on to property, I mean, if you're making £200 a month from a property, oh, hon, no, absolutely not. That, you know, that should be gone and that should be put into, uh, your money should be put into something a lot greater yielding. So if you remember, yield is, well, different people do it in different ways, but it's annual rent divided by purchase price or annual rent minus or the bills divided by purchase price plus all the cost to get to purchase. Um, so you, you can figure it out. I just do simple annual rent divided by purchase price so that I can compare all of my properties, apples with apples. I'm not doing apples with oranges. If you've got a dog, there's a couple of things you can do. So you're in a, um, well, you're in a low cash generation position and you're also in a low market growth. So number one, dispose of it and reinvest the money elsewhere. Number two, can you move it over from being in a low cash generation into, um, into maybe a cash cow or into a star? Are there other ways that you can monetize this property? So for example, if it's in a single let, can you move it into a shared house? If it's a house, can you split it into flats? Can you do serviced let apartments? Can you do holiday apartments? Can you work with um, service providers for charities who often want very good quality landlords, very good quality accommodation for people who've got troubles. So there's lots of ways. So have a look at your dogs, figure out which ones they are, and then figure out, do you move them into different parts of your business or do you dispose of them? Problem childs are the same, um, as we talked about. They're low cash generating, but they're in a high market share. So you've got more opportunity 
but you mustn't keep them in the problem child area. You either move them across to being high cash generating for them to become stars, or again, you dispose of them. So the two I want to talk about here in my beautiful drawing is around HMOs and cash cows. So we hear, don't we, that HMOs are the cash cow of the property industry. And I got some HMOs and they're superb in terms of cash generating. And here they are low market growth, but high cash generating. However, the definition in, in the Boston Matrix, and I've actually got it up here on my computer just to remind me, of a cash cow is a business that has got a large market share in a mature, slow growing industry. Um, a cash cow requires little investment and generates cash that can be used in other parts of the business. And that's exactly uh, what my matured set up HMOs do. However, you don't start by putting no money into an HMO and actually you don't continue by putting no money into an HMO and I'm going to show you this. Your HMOs start as stars, um, a business unit that has, um, excuse me, I'm just reading so I get it absolutely right for you guys, that has a large market share in a fast growing industry and um, we have huge demand for our shared houses. However, they, may, they, they generate cash because the market is growing rapidly they may require investment to maintain the lead. Um, now, for us, it's not so much that they require investment to maintain the lead, although I'm going to talk about that in a moment. It's also they require very significant investment to get there in the first place. So for me, very roughly, uh, rule of thumb, renovating a completely knackered normal property is kind of um, 20 to 25, just depending on what I exactly need to do to the property. Renovating a shared house by putting a number of en-suites on is kind of, well, I've done the last four, uh, last year was 40 to 45 plus that. Um, but renovating flats is kind of 50 to 60, a house into a couple of flats, 50 to 60. So it's not easy, if you like, to just start up an HMO. I found I've put in very significant investment for every HMO. And if I'm buying them in Bristol, I was buying them at roughly kind of 300,000. You've got a significant 25% deposit in the first place, plus a kind of 40 to 45 plus fat investment in the renovation. So they are stars at the beginning that requires significant cash investment to get them there. Then they throw off a lot of money, which is wonderful, once you've kind of matured your business and you'll move them into the cash cow quadrant, if you like. Because really what you want is the many parts of your cash, uh, of your business, of your property business in the cash cow quadrant. And that's a moo, mm, if you can see it. It's my, my drawing of a cow. That's my drawing of a dog. <laughs> Never gonna make it as an artist. Thank goodness I love property. Um, so there's a couple of things that I just want to discuss with you on HMOs if you get that quadrant. And I would encourage you to look up. It's called the BCG. It's the Boston Consulting Group uh, Growth Share Matrix. And just read around it and go, right, how do I move my problem childs into being stars or cash cows or dispose of them? My dogs that are low, low cash generating, low market growth. Well, how do I move them into being cash cows or stars or I dispose of them? And then my stars, which are your early day investment um, HMOs or shared houses, in my view, in my portfolio, how do I move them into being a cash cow, i.e. limited investment? Well, here's another little stat. I'm a, oh, look at this. Last year, I was doing some analysis at the weekend in between sorting out boilers. We did, or we booked, because obviously not every tenant turns up, we booked 1,293 viewings. That's mental. And so this dream, if you like, of passive income um, isn't exactly the case when it's an HMO portfolio. And I, I'm not knocking HMO portfolios, I'm just using this as a discussion piece for you guys to just think things through. So 1,291 viewings in a year. Now, that's not just, they didn't fall in our lap, we did a lot of um, scraping, we did a lot of calling, we're very proactive, and I have a very, very low uh, void rate. Most months it's zero, but there are occasionally little tiny blips which just make me shake. But I refuse for my my HMO, which is effectively a star. It requires continued investment to make it effective. I just refuse to have voids. It just it's not in my DNA. So we did a thousand two hundred and ninety one viewings. So I'm now at the mature stage of my portfolio. Um, I'm thinking well. There's loads of benefits to these shared houses. We have great quality tenants. We have top end tenants. They pay their rent on time. They're generally very pleasant and very enjoyable to work with. Um, it's very high cash yielding. I've had to put significant investment in in the first place. So I had months and years of living on beans on toast. So if you're living on beans on toast right now, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, not anymore, but uh, I certainly did on, on the growth stage. But 
this is still, if you like, problematic. You know, my, like you, I kind of dream of having this life where, you know, I've moved in the rich dad, poor dad quadrant from employed to self-employed to business owner to property investor. Uh, and next year I'm um, planning a month's travelling and then I want to slowly elongate those periods of life where I do other things and then come back to property, which I love. So my dilemma is, how do I move my shared houses, which are effectively stars, so they are in high market growth and high cash generating, but they continue to require investment into cash cow, which is high cash generating, but kind of lower market growth or lower investment required. And my conclusion is twofold, and this is just my own thoughts. Number one, and I won't allow a letting agency to to manage my properties because frankly I'm legally responsible and I want to make sure the paperwork's done correctly and I've never yet and please forgive me and please contact me if you are one in Bristol that is amazing I've never yet met in a letting agency that's as proactive as my own team to run my shared house portfolio so number one we're looking at outsourcing the tenant find because 1291 viewings last year flipping heck how much work was that and then number two I'm looking at very slowly over a period of years, not, you know, nothing huge, nothing fast, um, moving my properties to uh, flats. So they're currently stars, they're currently throwing off high cash, which is wonderful, but we, they're quite high intensity. And what you'll find on one or two HMOs, ah, oh, it's a breeze, it's beautiful, it's lovely, you'll know all your tenants. By the time you have a significant portfolio, you, you're doing well over a thousand viewings a year. Um, and that's significant. So. I want you to go back to the Boston Growth, um, the uh, Boston Consulting Group Growth Share Matrix, and think about your own properties in a kind of strategic way. Where are your problem childs? Move them out or move them into being your stars. Where are your dogs? Get rid of them or move them into being either cash cows or stars. And then look at your two good cash generating property types. So your stars that require significant and possibly continued investment. And for me, that's HMOs. I don't need major investment in renovating now because I'm, I'm set up, which is wonderful. I do set aside 10% for, of the rent roll for repairs, but I need significant HR, human resource, team investment. I've got three people that run my portfolio and one of them ain't me. And then how do you move your high cash generating properties into being cash cows, which basically don't need significant investment because you've already invested and you no longer need to put a lot, in my case, of team, and team, of course, needs paying quite rightly. So those are really interesting strategic thoughts. I'm, I've been puzzling over it for a while. I'm very, very grateful for owning a portfolio. I'm very grateful, and I, I want to keep my properties very high quality, but now my, um, not concern, but now my focus is moving my stars, which are high cash generating but high intensity into cash cows which is very much the kind of the passive income that we talked about so we could say passive income or we could say Boston Consulting Group growth matrix cash cows it's kind of the same thing in my book so let me know your thoughts and good luck and I hope everything goes really well for you in property we've got loads of really good resources for you somewhere you can subscribe um, also, we have a link at the end on the end slate that takes you to our website. We've got tons of really cool resources, lots of packs, lots of courses. We do an online mentoring program as well, and this is the kind of geeky stuff we talk about. But I hope you enjoy our videos, I hope you subscribe, and I hope everything goes really well for you in property. Bye just now.